up, what's up everyone? Peace, what's going on? Happy Halloween and all of that. Welcome to another episode of the Two British Nerds. Uh, there was no podcast last week due to I was just really, very, very, very ill. So uh, I've got myself back together. My voice is slowly still uh, croaked out, I guess, but I'm feeling 95% better. So decided to do this podcast today in the spirit of all... Uh, Halloween, so hope everyone is, um, you know, getting prepared for Halloween, um, doing their thing, dressing up. Shout out to all the cosplay, uh, cosplayers out there. I can imagine you guys are gonna have an awesome, dope outfit, whatever you are. Uh, shout out to everyone that's literally at the uh, right about now. They're at the Stanley um, Comic Con. Comic Con in LA man so if you're down there get 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 yourself down to the Stanley booth and try and pick up if you can if they haven't sold out the Stanley um pop Funko oh uh, pop I was gonna say Funko pop uh Funko bubbleheads um there's the silver one I believe the gold one as well is definitely there and there is the there's there's, a, there's another two which are really limited um they are one is made one has the chrome look it looks amazing and the other one basically is platinum and they're both so 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 shiny man proper proper proper, proper cool um, I was lucky actually for from for myself uh, well a friend of mine Anna went to uh um she went to the new york comic con and she grabbed me a uh the the gold stanley pop funko vinyl so i was really happy much love and respect to you thank you so much um that's the first exclusive i've literally got that's an exclusive from the states as you know i mean from the uk nothing comes into the uk and if it does the prices are so 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 bad you know vampire prices i call them um so yeah that's coming hopefully um <clears throat> next week i also managed uh to to basically well to get um um what do you call it um i got a pair of the pack of the agent colson trading cards which are pretty cool uh i love them and i'm a big agent of shield fan love clark greg love the show so i was pretty happy to get them um as well uh blue i was looking around for them yesterday and i um Saw some crazy prices for like two hundred pounds and stuff like that. Whoa! And then I saw, I just went on Amazon by chance and I saw them, and I thought, what? Okay, so I paid like twenty pounds, which is like maybe, uh, let's say, twenty-seven um, dollars and so forth. So I was happy to get them. So yeah, um, I'm pretty happy. They're coming um, next week. I also got my my uh, villains uh, my villains month pack from clip to corpse this is my first crate of them pretty cool got some nice stuff i was really happy with the stuff that i got and i actually um the pop vinyl that was that's actually in the box was actually uh morbius from uh you know spider-man marvel comics um there was actually two that were being given out so you you, you got either the Stalin morbius or the zombie morbius and I was like, oh, I really want the zombie movie. So I opened my pack and I was like, yes, I got it. So I'm pretty happy. Um, the next box will be um, going to the Galaxy box. And that, that the last the last day to order, that will be December the 4th. So you get yourself up there on collectorcorpse.com and try them out, man. Pretty cool. Pretty happy. I'll be definitely getting my Guardians of the Galaxy box. And um, that's um, pretty much it, you know. So let's... let's Let's ta -ta -ta, get onto this podcast, Two British Nerds, with myself, the DJ Saba. Um, again, hit me up on the Instagram at Two British Nerds, that's with a Z. Um, personal Twitter is basically just at C A V A uh, DJ, and email me, uh, Two British Nerds with a Z at gmo.com for I don't know, inquiries. Uh, if you want to be a guest, if you want me to ask a certain question anything um feedback if you like the podcast if you don't um just let me know man and i'll be happy to get in contact contact you guys oh i'm on, I'm on instagram like 24 7 guys so um and twitter so um 
it hit me up as much as you can. I always respond, you know, um, ASAP, unless I'm sleeping or, or, you know, whatnot. But I will. And with that being said, um, let's get into um, just a few bits today. Um, let's get into basically uh, some movie news. Um, so the first announcement was made just literally just um, a week ago. So there was rumours that Mark Ruffalo, a.k.a. the Hulk, would actually is, well, was actually going to be in um, um, for Ragnarok with Chris Hemsworth that plays for. And it, made, it was made official um, by Mark Ruffalo and Marvel that uh, Mark Ruffalo, the Hulk, will be in, um, you know, will be literally... Um, in for Ragnarok, and um, a lot of people went ballistic saying, "Oh, now he's in outer space. Could we possibly see him? Um, you know, possibly see the Hulk in maybe like um, you know, World War Hulk, Planet Hulk. We never know, guys. Uh, we never know. Um, what's really interesting is what uh, Mark. Uh, what's really interesting is about this storyline is I really want to just see have a Hulk actually fits into." For Ragnarok, you know, it's going to be interesting. And what's going to be really cool about this, this, um, um, you know, this movie is you're going to have two powered, you know, two, one of Marvel's two powered characters in one movie, and the Hulk, powered, completely a I mean, powerhouse, Bruce Banner, completely a sci- you know, a scientist, you know, super super smart, and a god, which is four. Who could pretty much do anything? Um, so it's gonna be pretty interesting to see what happens and you know how 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 actually for, you know I love to see and and see how you know they meet you know where 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 has Bruce Banner been all this time you know um, after Age of Ultron you know will we see will we get a glimpse into you know his relationship now with um with um with Black Widow. Um, you know what's what's going to happen. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see uh, the backstory for Bruce Banner and the Hulk, and to see how this leads up into um, for Ragnarok. So that's um, um, been confirmed. Um, also, right now we had just an article from um, uh, from actually Mark Ruffalo himself speaking about basically um, speaking about um, um, a, f- a Hulk solo movie. Um, and his, his exact words were, he says, um, um, actually it feels even far away. Um, it's not Mar- it's not Marvel's property, it's Universal property. So if you guys know, you know, uh, you know, they own Universal Studios, actually own the rights to the Hulk as a, as an individual character. So he says, he says, um, I don't know, it seems uh, really problematic. Uh, Ruffalo isn't too concerned though. There's only so much that, that. That's in my power, and I'm I'm not going to agonize over what is not in my power. Um, a solo Hulk would be great, but the character has been at his cinematic best so far when part of an ass- with, with part of an assemble. Uh, but if Ruffalo had if Ruffalo had it had it this way, he knows what he'd like to explore the duality of the Hulk banner relationship. Uh, when you get off the planet Earth, you can start playing with that stuff a little bit. He explained, "I'm angling for it." Um, I don't know if it will happen uh, now, but at some point I'd like to see it happen. When I was doing Age of Ultron, doing the, um, the Scarlet Witch acid trip scenes, it really took me a long time to figure out what the Hulk would be afraid of. And when I realised it was Banner, uh, the relationship it, uh, the the relationship is what we're all so into. But we never see we never see them in the same scene together. Um, you're either one of the you're either one or the other or somewhere in between. I always imagine that that um, that that could be pretty exciting if he pulled it off. Um, in the Marvel universe, there there is some precedence for it. I remember as a kid seeing few of the comics that I that I'd, um, that I that I'd have this multi multi dimensional thing. So there's a lot of uh, ways to do it. If we could find the right uh, context context to use it, um, there we go. So. The Hulk, Bruce Banner, the Hulk, Bruce, Bruce Banner, yeah, otherwise known as Mark Ruffalo, will be will, will next appear in Thor Ragnarok, which begins which begins filming in Australia in June 2016, and is scheduled to be released in 
theaters on november the 3rd 2017 so that's pretty cool guys i mean that's a concept they probably i think they, they might consider doing having mark ruffalo and the hulk in one scene um which is nuts right because i could i would love to see them um i would love to see them fuse i would love them to see to see those two guys separate in a sense fuse back and then in the comics that we have dr banner where he's actually the hulk as where he transforms to you know he transforms as the hulk but has the personality and the ability and the mind of dr banner so he is smart you know no more dumb hulk no more this and that he as he's actually dr banner in the hulk forms so it'll be interesting to see if they actually um if they actually incorporate that or you know seed it into uh, the movie's P be pre pretty um pretty interesting. Um next uh we have we have news from Sam Raimi um who basically wants to come back and do another Spider Man movie. And um Um so Sam Raimi is the man responsible for uh, for bringing Peter Parker to the big main screen in the original Sony Marvel Spider Man trilogy. And that's the ones of Tobey Maguire, Spider Man 1, 2, and 3. Um, the first two films were considered new high water marks in superhero cinema, but the third left audience disappointed. Yeah, there was a lot of ups and downs. A lot of people said the movie was rubbish. A lot of people said that uh, it's, it's, just, it's just poor. Um, I'll be honest. It wasn't really all that, but I, I Spider Man three in my in my is much better than the Amazing Spider Man one and two. Like period. So it says um, in an interview of the week, um, Sam Raimi owns up to the failure of Spider Man three and says he'd be interested in helping Marvel with whatever they have in store next for the Wall Crawler. He says I messed up. I says I mess I messed on the third one. Raimi uh, Raimi said, I think this uh, they're so complete now. Um, they probably don't need me anymore, but if they needed me, I'd love to. It's a gr it's great to be wanted. Um, you know what? If he was put on, you know, the next Spider Man movie, it'll be it'll be it'll be I reckon it'll be amazing. Just through the fact that he's a Spider Man fan, so he you know he's got the movie on lock, you know, just by being there and putting his ideas and his love and passion and energy into that movie. Because you know, Spider Man one and two. Was for me, I, I love them. Though. I love those two movies. You know, I love them. Um, the only thing he, the only thing he implemented into the movie was to, I would say, to basically when he he um he changed was the webbing came out of his hand, not of his cartridges. And I thought to myself, well, technically, if he's Spider Man, I mean, I, I, I guess Stanley could have actually made him made the webbing made the webbing the webbing come out of his hand, but didn't. But you know, it's not really something that's a big make uh, something that's a disappointment. But um, when he changed, it, I was like. Cool, I'm not really fast. Um, and the character, you know, he the Peter Parker he he had in Spider Man One and Two, it was very good because he tr it stayed true, um, to the character, and for for its time, right? And when that movie came out, when that movie came out first time, it was pretty cool. And you know, to this day, it's Spider Man One and Two is my, it's my favorite Spider Man movies. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of Spider. -Man. I'm not a fan of the Amazing Spider Man One and Two. Did not like him, not a bit. Did not like it so. If he comes back, it'll be it'll be a it'll be a bonus. The movie will be amazing, even more. It'll be the movie the movie will be amazing, and it'll, it'll, it'll attract much more much more Spider Man fans back into um the theaters when the movie well uh, into the movies when the movie drops. So yeah, bring him back. So that's uh, some news there for you guys. All right. Um, as we know, this is some movie news, but Stan Lee news, yeah, because we know Stan Lee is designing and making his own character that's coming out. Um, don't know when the movie will be out, but he's working literally on this movie, and I'm looking forward to actually seeing it. So let's get into it, guys. So Chinese uh, movie star, uh, what's her name? Her name. Her name is star. Her name is Lee. Uh, Bing Bing, um, who has recently appeared in Hollywood films like Transformers: Age of Age of Extinction, and as Ada Wong in Resident Evil: A Retribution, has landed the lead role in Realm, the lead role in the uh, Realm, a superhero a superhero film based on the original idea from comic book icon Stan Lee. Uh, work and um. <clears throat> Is what Stan Lee said. Uh, what a kick it has been to create our first Chinese female superhero. 
and an empowering one at that and uh, suddenly has been such an, an, exper- an experience bringing to life an a international woman character and the ability to do so has been different from anything we've done so we've ever done I'm thoroughly enjoying every minute of it uh, Predators and the Three Musketeers scribe Alex Levitix is penning, penning the screenplay um, Stanley's imagination has put the, fil- the, the world some of its most icon pop culture stories and characters said uh, Mark Gale um, chairman of Fundamental Films it gives us incredible pleasure pleasure and excitement to present his latest creation um, the film is being produced by China by China based Fundamental Films and Stanley Global Entertainment uh, Fundamentals Gregory Ojahan is in charge of production and Gary Go- um, Golson is the executive producer guild um, champion from Stanley Global Entertainment who uh, sorry if um, Dual champion from Stanley Global Entertainment will also produce, and so will the film star Lee Bing Bing. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I reckon because I guess it's going to be a Chinese production in a sense. It's going to be at least I say two and a half hours long. So I'm just looking forward to see what Stanley has cooped up in this man's, and it's going to be so cool. Um, some DC news. Yes, Chris Pine has confirmed his casting in Wonder Woman. While promoting his upcoming film the finest hours yes so uh the star trek and jack ryan actor confirmed that he'll be in the film and why he excited about it um but hasn't revealed what his role is and chris pine says i don't really know what i'm what i'm allowed to tell about you um, i'm super excited of course gal gadot is really talented patty jenkins will perform and we will shoot we will shoot in film what excites me most is to turn into a movie with a superhero woman, with a woman in the, the lead role. I am, a, um, I am a team of this intelligent, beautiful, <laughs> strong woman to destroy the wicked and save humanity, the, um, the routine, whatever. So yeah, Chris Pine, I reckon he'll suit the role. Everyone was thinking he was actually maybe going to be casted as the Green Lantern. I reckon it would have been a cool choice. Uh, I'll, I am going to watch Wonder Woman when it comes out. Uh, it can be pretty interesting to see what he does, how he acts in a superhero movie. It's going to be pretty, pretty cool. Um, some more DC news. Um, Gotham has, Go- Gotham has cast House of Cards, Nathan Darrow as, um, Dr. Victor Fries, AKA Mr. Freeze. I like Mr. Freeze, man. And it's second season. Um, Darrow is best known for playing Frank Underwood's bodyguard, Edward Mitchum on the, on the hit and neck, uh, Netflix, Netflix, <laughs> Netflix, political drama, man. Oh, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I to keep stuttering, stuttering. This is weird. Um, so I guess I'm still not feeling that well. Um, the first time we see Freeze is in December, and then we're going to we're going to be telling a heavy free story in episode twelve and thirteen. Gotham EP John um, Stephen said, "I said, um, well, that's all the news. I literally." Um, I guess have um for you guys, you know. Um, if you guys have any news you want to share with us, or you know you want to speak to us about, um, like I said, man, just feel free to hit us up on the um, uh, email us or email email me your questions or what stories you want me to talk about, or you know, at, um, two British nerds that's with a Z at gmail dot com. Um, and check check out the Instagram page as well. I guess uh, I reckon you guys will love my Instagram page. It is probably like a just just. Just a Marvel, because I do love my love. Um, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Marvel, and I guess Image Comics. Um, like I will always say DC, um, one of my favourite DC characters has to be um, Constantine. I was so annoyed um, when they cancelled the show. Uh, but he is actually, because I forgot to say this, uh, I actually forgot to write this down in this week's news, but he's actually going to be eating, going to be back in the next episode of, um, of um, you know, of, um, of Arrow. What really irritates me was like when this, when they when they when they cut off Constantine, they didn't end it. No, they did not end the show. So it just left it like uh, a what if scenario? What was going to happen? Do you know what I'm trying to say? So at least they could have at least ended the show, right, with one episode, like a two hour special, you know, like a two hour special, or like an hour and a half or something, and just end, end the sh- end the, end the season. And, at least people would have got a bit of uh, closure and you know but they didn't they just cut it off and I was like what but yeah I do like Constantine um, Harley Quinn 
um, Animal Man. I do like Animal Man. Uh, I was collecting the Animal Man. Um, Swamp Thing as well. I was collecting that as well. It was pretty cool. I really did. I really did um, um, enjoy that book. So I was collecting a few DC, but then you know, sort of just went downhill. I guess I didn't really find anything that I liked. Any of the characters that I liked in DC. But looking at, like I said, I'm a big. I'm a huge Marvel fan. Um, I love Image Comics. I, I have all the comics right. I've, the comic distributors like Image, like Marvel, Image, DC, um, Dark Horse, and you know Valiant and whatnot. I would say Image Comics have the most addictive comics because they're so, um, so they it's they so they they own created they can do what they want to do. Um, if you guys haven't checked out one of the latest uh, releases, please 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 buy a copy of from Image Comics, um, Paper Girls. And get a copy of um, uh, the Beauty from Image Comics. Those two comics, for, I'm a, I'm addicted to these two comics. And one of the comics I'm about to review here, basically for me, um, I, I it only came out just a few days ago, Wednesday, uh, New Comic Book Day, and I'm totally hooked onto it. You know, so I literally only have just three books to review because um, the books I the other books I did get were just books I I didn't I forgot to pick up from ages ago when I which I already reviewed um and stuff so i actually read them online no i did not i read them from a friend of mine and then um i decided yeah i hadn't had them um so the first book has caused so much controversy that it's basically caused petitions for the for the uh <laughs> for the writer to basically be um pulled off the book again it's gone on fox news it's, it's got controversy political and people been crying and moaning and you know at the end of the day guys it, it's a comic book it's a comic book yes it's a comic book and the comic, the comic book that i'm the comic book i keep stuttering the comic book that i'm talking about is sam wilson captain america issue two written by um nick spencer and art by uh, daniel okuna um so the first basically issue was the big controversy was controversy so controversy was is that uh captain america sam wilson does not like communists and that blew a big debate and controversy with fox news and people were getting petitions and nick spencer was getting you know i was on his twitter page people trying to email him saying you hate communists blah 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 and um, end of the day, guys, it's a comic book. But saying that, right, one thing I like about Marvel comics that people nowadays don't seem to understand and understand is Marvel comics. Its storylines are actually based on real events, which 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 is what made Marvel comics in the when Stanley was writing, I believe, in the sixties, seventies, really popular because he put the story, he put real events in comic book form. So this is nothing. This retelling of a retelling of what Marvel comics. Have been doing for you know since they became Marvel Comics. Um, you know, Captain America has always been the guy in the comic books to fight. You know, he's dealing with the governments. He's you know he's fought Nazis and there's there's so much there's so much politics. And I think guess in Captain America, it's um it's it's crazy. So um, this basically for me is just one of those stories. You know, like I said, if you go back into Stanley's archive and read. The origins of certain characters, you know, if you, for example, um, Iron Man in a sense, right? Um, Iron Man is basically a man that sells in, you know, what he was doing was was producing weapons of mass destruction, which is in the sense what happens, what's happening in the world today. People are producing weapons of mass destruction to kill people. Um, but that's one aspect of Tony Stark, um, you know, as Iron Man. Um, we also have, for example, um, you know, Captain America. Captain America was found, you know, when America was going to war. And they needed a big, they needed an iconic hero, and Captain America came up. Um, you know, the Hulk. The reason the Hulk gets so angry, Bruce Banner gets so agitated and gets so angry, he transforms into he transforms into the Hulk. Is yes, we all know he has, he was bombarded with gamma rays and so forth. But the other aspect that people don't know about, if you go to Marvel's Wikipedia, is that Bruce Banner. Um, which man's dad used to abuse his mum as a, um, you know, he used to abuse his mum. And um, as, um, you know, Banner, as a kid, he picked up on that, and that drove him a bit mad. So, in a sense, when he gets angry, he's getting flashbacks from um, from that. So, there's a lot of, there's basically a lot of, um, impl- there's a lot of stories 
in Marvel Comics are based on real events. So, you know, regardless of what your views are, right, I'm happy that this book, that issue, that Nick Spencer did what he did because it probably caused a lot of people to basically start thinking, I guess, and in, in a sense. But this is this is what is what comics are based on. They're based on real events. You know, the metaphys- the storylines are are woven in there. But if if you read if you read past the um the um the, the script and you go and you're actually reading it for what it is, you will see the story of how the world is being how what's happening in the world in a two a two dollar or two pound comic book. And you see that more, so you see you see that all over the place. But in Marvel Comics, they do that all the time. So, anyway, enough of me talking about that. <laughs> Again, if you guys want to know what I mean, really mean, just go on Fox, go on YouTube and type in um, Captain America Fox News and watch the video for yourself. Let me know what people think. So, again, this is um, Sam Wilson, Captain America, um, written by Nick Spencer, art by Daniel Acuna. Um, issue 2 just came out actually, just this week. Um, so... Well, we had an issue one was we had basically um, Captain America, which Sam Wilson uh, was actually removed and fired from Shield by Maria Hill. Um, so it was a bit intense for him. So in the sense, now he's on his own. Um, he's trying to do his own thing, but he really, but he's kind of struggling in the way because he doesn't have the funds. In a sense, so he's struggling to to still help people. Uh, live, I guess, because he needs money in a sense, and also to try, and you know, to to basically to re to to regroup because he he is not with Shield anymore. Doesn't have, doesn't have the technology, doesn't have the funds, doesn't have the people with him, and he, you know, him and him and Steve Rogers are not seen eye to eye in a sense. They don't speak um, with each, with each other anymore. And I was like, okay, wow, what's going on? So um, you know, they you know they've been friends for years, so. Um, issue two, um, issue two, kind of goes uh, literally into the backstory of what happened with, with uh, in a sense, goes into the storyline of what um, the 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 um, the the rift that happened between Shield, Steve Rogers, and Sam Wilson, and it goes into that, um, and it kind of gives you the lowdown of what literally happened, and it's pretty cool, um, pretty intense. Pretty dark as well, you know. We've got Nick Spencer writing this, you know. If you read, um, if you've read, um, Bedlam, which is an amazing book, and that got, got cancelled, I was like, well, oh man, you kind of uh, see the the similarity when he's actually writing, um, Sam Wilson. So, um, in this, you have a more, uh, you have a more serious Sam Wilson. He's not a boy anymore. He's, he's looking to cut deals on his own. Um, looking to looking to basically do things on his own, I guess. And um, it's it's pretty cool. Um, how we see this new version or this new take on um, on Sam Wilson? Um, I remember before when I went, when, he was, when he was put as Captain America, I was like, mm-hmm. I'm not too sure to be honest. But I've kind of actually grown to like this. Um, you know, to, I've grown to like Sam as Captain America. Um, it's okay. You know, he, he he obviously he's not Steve Rogers. Doesn't have the super. Doesn't have the super. Uh, so this uh, the super uh serum soldier serum in him but he does play he does actually play the role of captain america to the to the t i guess really t- tries to bring it to life in his in his in his daily actions um i really like how in this book we see pretty much a i guess an origin story of what happened with him as shield his motives, um, you know, what really happened again, again, what really happened with him and Steve Rogers and why S.H.I.E.L.D. basically just, in a sense, just cut him off and what he's going to do, what he's doing now and how he's actually going to move forward to make things better and to help people out even more. Um, the artwork's really, really cool. I like it because it, it really goes to the tone of the book, which is like dark, semi-dark with humour. I uh, really like um, how Misty Knight is drawn in this book, and um, it's pretty cool. Also, like how Marvel Comics are sort of introducing the Luke Cage characters. I guess um, are seeding are seeding them into the comics, so people will get a fair idea of what this character will be like in um, you know in Luke Cage when when he hits. And hopefully, she might make, she might even make a cameo in um in what do you call it in um, Jessica Jones. I just want to see that black beautiful woman. 
just want to see the afro hair man because she's amazing man um, her character's cool serious funny seductive in a way and she's serious when she wants to be um yeah it's the the commentary in this book is pretty cool uh you know the scenes where you see like steve and sam talking to each other gets intense humorous bit dark uh it's pretty cool i would say though that from reading issue one and two this is more of like um like um uh, i guess like an origin story in a way because remember remember this right um remember that this is eight months after secret wars has pretty much finished but they haven't told anyone that she what happened within those eight months so it's like this first issue and second issue is more of like an origin story to what's really what happened previous i guess what happened before and i'm i'm assuming that um issue three will be a fresh fresh um start of a of a first arc in this um in this book uh but overall i i you know it's it's an okayish book it's cool um it's different um i just actually need to know if marvel are actually going to be bringing out seeing that captain america is now sam wilson will steve rogers be getting his own solo book you know it's gonna be pretty interesting to see if they do do that um um but it's pretty cool i do recommend this um to if you're new to captain america um if you're new to marvel comics um What's really good about these um, these number ones is is they'll give you basically you can just dive in there because Secret Wars, like I said, is a Secret Wars is basically a revamp, a, a total destruction of the six one six main universe and the Ultimate Universe, um, which basically were destroyed. And what came out of that basically now is the new Marvel Universe. So you have the Marvel the Marvel Universe characters and the Ultimate Universe characters, the ones that survived or I don't know are going to survive will be in one universe. So with that being said, you have more diversity, um, and you you ha- if you're new to the comics, like again, like I said, it's a it's a great time for anyone to jump in and pick up a comic. It could be a Spider-Man comic, Miss Marvel, Captain America, and uh, to see where it leads. And what's really cool about this new universe is, in, from my perspective, is is that because it's a brand new universe, right? That means now when they do things in the comic books, they can just totally see it into the movies because it's a new universe. So that's pretty um that's pretty cool so again really did enjoy uh enjoy reading this and i really love the front cover pretty cool it just reminds me of like civil war whose side are you on uh which is something that marvel are slowly really really seeing into the um the marvel universe especially in agents of um um shield um the next book is basically um what if infinity dark um dark region um uh, written written uh written by Joshua uh, Wilmerson and um art is Goran Suzuki. So again, uh what if Infinity Dark Region, what if the Green Goblin stole the Infinity Gauntlet? So um if people don't know, years and years ago Marvel released What If Comics, you know, I remember having What If Um Rogue Talk What If Rogue took Thor's hammer, what if Strife killed the X Men? Uh, what if Storm never became a thief? And what was the other one? I can't remember. I had a few what ifs. They were they were pretty cool. So it kind of gives you like a perspective on what what could have happened if this you know what if this happened. There's actually one of the best one of the ones that I I need to get and I recommend everyone to get. And I haven't read this one. I haven't read it right. But it's what if the Silver Surfer um, had the Infinity Gauntlet. Ooh, deep right. That one I need to get. Um, so this one basically it, it's just it just shows you what Norman Osborn would have done and how the world would have been if he had the Green Goblin. Sorry, if he had the Infinity Gauntlet, and it's pretty. It's a it's a very very dark. It's a, it's a very dark, very dark, crazy. Uh, book with a, with a twist at the end that will make everyone be like, huh? Yep. Uh, I, I I enjoyed it. It was a very fast read for me, uh, but I flipped through it so quickly. It was it was crazy, twisted, dark, deep, and intense, just like Norman Osborn is. Um, it is, and I guess it shows you how crazy and how nuts he's willing to go when he gets. When he gets when he gets power, 
you know. Um, I'd really recommend this literally again to to anybody. If you if you if you're a Spider Man fan, you know what the Green Goblin is like. You know what Norman Osborn is like, and you can imagine his character and his 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 crazy way of thinking with that much power in his hand. You know the Infinity Gauntlet. It's crazy, right? Um, it's really it's really good. Um, you get to see basically um, a lot of the characters near the Avengers, um, Thanos, a lot of characters. Uh, it's, it's 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 pretty gruesome. Like I, I, I'm never gonna lie, it's pretty gruesome. It's, but it, it, I I did like it. When I saw the front cover, I was like, I'm buying it. Didn't really care because I knew what the Goblin is like. I was like, I'm definitely buying this and adding this to my um <laughs> to my uh to my collection, um, which is pretty 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 cool. Um, but you know the tone of it is is very nice. The artwork is 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 pretty cool. Um, reading this, reading like this, it reminds me of, um, Recommender's comic book that he's actually, um, put out, uh, which is Hell Hydra, uh, so it's like the same type of tone, in a way, but this one is more, more crazier, more nuttier, it's because it's, you know, it's, it's the Goblin, um, but it, it's, it, it really is, it's really cool because you, get, you really get to see how Norman Osborn is as a character, and how crazy he really is, you know, he's, people think that Thanos is crazy, and he's nuts, uh, no, nah, he's not really, things with Thanos, he's not, he's not, he's not crazy, he's powerful, he's smart, he's obviously obsessed with death, but he's, he's smart, but he craves power, but he's not nuttier, he's not crazy like this guy, so, um, you get to see a lot of the, the, the real dark side of Norman Osborn, and, um, how he actually functions now he has a infinity gauntlet around his hand so I, like i said really enjoyed this book I recommend it to everyone it's very very short it's only a one-off issue because it's a what if issue and um you know it's 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 pretty cool and like i said i recommend this to everyone uh right the next one that, that there's a next book that i've actually really really um really got hooked on and this came out just it just came actually just um ooh, just came out uh, Wednesday and this is um Black Magic and it's by Greg Rucker and Nicola Scott um it's can I say, like, I I love this book so much because, you know, when I saw the when I saw when I saw um obviously like the word black magic, you know, you're dealing with magic in one way. I loved it because I you know I love magic and the occult. You know, I love dark books. I love the occult. You know, I just I've always loved it. You know, uh, the mysteries of the mystery, the the metaphysics of it, all, which is why I like you know when I put a little a mini review of this on my on Instagram, I said um you know it's, I'm so psyched up. I'm so looking forward to um. Um, what do you call it? Sorry, guys. Give me one second. I have to put my Mac on charge because I have like four percent battery life. That's not a good look. Um, there we go, and we have power. Yes, we do. So, um, like I said, let me repeat myself real quick. I'm a big fan of the occult and magic and i love that i love like books on it i love like stories on it and movies on it which is why i'm really psyched up and so happy that next year i'm gonna get one of my favorite characters in the movie which is uh stephen strange otherwise known as dr strange <laughs> so i'm so happy for that movie um but it's a very very like black magic for me opens up and it's a very, very, very starts off very dark, um, very, very revealing in some of the scenes. Um, it is a very, very dark start to the book. Um, I love, I love the, um, I love the artwork of the book, the tone of it, which is basically the book is actually black on. Um, it's all black and grey. So in a sense, there is in a sense, it's like there isn't no colour. There is no colour, but then you see some colour in the book, um, which makes the book for me like very, very just um 
vintage, very organic, um, very, very, um, very nice, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it's very brutal, it's very intense, and, um, I was like, when I was reading the book, I was like, hold on a second, where's the black magic, so, where's the magic, you know, where's, you know, what's going on, um, but, you know, when I finally saw it, I was like, whoa, like, it was deep, you know, the, the book is very, very deep, because, um, what I liked about, what I like about this book is, in a sense, it, you you kind of get a depth into, what the, like, an introduction to the main character, and, um, she's, um, she's very, very potent, very calm, very cool, um, but she's very powerful at the same time, and you see the excess and magnitude of her power in this book, and you're like, whoa, like, seriously, um, this is, this is what happens when people utilize, and I guess, go into the dark side, or use the dark aspect of themselves, in a sense, quote-unquote, let's say, let's use an, an example, like, Darth Vader from, um, um, from um from Star Wars. Um it's a very, very it's a very graphical, intense, um very, very intense book. The way it's written is amazing. The sto- the, the artwork is, is I, I love it, you know. Um I'm not saying it's because like I said like I said I'm a big fan of, of the magic scene, but I'm just a fan of like of how precise and how the the book is written and how it stays true to the occult ways of when you're actually reading books on like the occult and magic how it stays true to them so um the way the book is written you know the the um the story is actually it's on point um and i and i totally um i love it i just i just i just i just love it man i mean issue and i was i was i'm like yeah i'm definitely hooked on because like when you see what happens in the book you don't expect it to to happen or you think it's gonna be like a predictable book of like yeah you know it's a cult people are gonna do magic and whatever and stuff but it's not like that because it, it you concentrate more it deals more like i said with this with this main character who, like, who i'm not even gonna give you guys a name because i want you guys to basically um you know um read the book for yourself and you kind of see that this character is actually in a sense in her own way um she's dealing with she's dealing with certain things or she, 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 she has like, there's a scene where like she tries, um, she's trying to, I guess, trying to help someone. And then she's like, I can't. And I was like, huh? And then it causes like a scene. But then I'm thinking, why can't you? Because obviously you could, but you stopped. So there's something, there's something with this person, I guess, that she needs to sort out. Or there's, I guess maybe she, she's looking for balance and whatnot. Um, but it's very, very cool. You know, it's very, very cool. It starts off very just like, um, very, um, Actually, for, you know what? Let me just let me put it out there. For me, when I saw what they were like, the opening scene in the book, like in the forest. I'm not gonna say what they were doing in the forest, but what they were what they were doing in the forest. I was like, yeah, yes. This is this is this is the kind of stuff that I've been wanting to see in comic books for such a long time. Um, the the symbolism, the the um the artwork, the words, um, really, really, really got me really really got me excited because I was like yeah this is the kind of stuff that I'm into and this is what I really love um so it's pretty cool but then again if you're not into I, I guarantee you guys if you're not into the occult and magic you still you still really like this book um because it's just it's just so cool like in my experience um some people might like it maybe because of the storyline the color certain scenes or whatnot but I really really enjoyed it um and I really can't wait to basically get issue two of um of the book um the artwork is very again it's very it's it's detailed to a certain extent which makes it it's more like i guess portrait portrait in a way um it's pretty cool man it, it's like i said uh, there's there's nothing really else i can say about this book except for the ending of the book i was like i was like whoa man i was like this is literally this this is um this is um this is totally like nuts mate well i mean totally nuts i mean totally nuts and i I totally loved it and i was like yes um so again um (laughs) this is um this is black magic uh so it's black magic with a with a a k guys so it's m-a-g-i-c-k um greg rocker nicola scott um pretty amazing book loved it couldn't get enough of it 
There's, I believe, four covers out. I got the one of the red because, you know, red does it for me. And I was like, so I was like, yeah. And again, this is under Image Comics. On the back of the book, it says occult, suspense, crime for mature readers. And it is, guys. It is book is for mature readers. So uh, when you see this, the, the, how, graphic, how graphic it can be, then you'll be like, whoa, okay. Uh, this is a graphic book. And the cover that I got was cover um, cover B. And the back of the book just says, right, let's walk the walk. Um, so again, pretty an amazing book. Black Magic um, issue one. <clears throat> um, I, you know, I, I like... I have all the image comic books. I have all the comic books I'm actually reading and that I'm um, hooked on. I would say Iron Man, the new Iron Man um, comic, because it has a different different type of ass take on, um, um, on basically on um, Tony Stark. Oh, just before I forget, um, Marvel have announced there'll be a new title coming up. So um, it's going to be International Iron Man, which I actually believe takes a take. Uh, the take on Tony's biological parents, who they were, and it's I guess it's more like from what they were saying it's more of like a um it's gonna be more of like espionage than anything else I guess but it's written by Brian Michael Bendis Bendis was actually currently writing the you know uh, the new Invincible Iron Man which is pretty cool and the reason they call it International Iron Man because it's, it's gonna it's gonna be written in um translated for for in for 20 different countries. I can't remember the countries, what the countries are, guys, but uh, for me, for them to do that, I guess it's going to be international. And I, that's why they call it international. But I, I, my, my take on the book is going gonna, gonna to involve, I guess, politics and so forth. But look out for that and I'll give you more information when, uh, about the book when it, when it comes close to making its debut, when they release information about the book. Uh, yeah, man. Black Magic, I guess. I guess uh, sorry, Black Magic again. Um, that's Black Magic from Image Comics, Greg Rucker, Nicola Scott. The next issue too will be coming out in November. And yeah, sorry. Uh, like I was saying, um, the books I'm hooked on, right, will be Invincible Iron Man and from Image Comics will be this, Black Magic, Saga, um, The Beauty as well, which is like a, it's, the, it's an amazing, addictive book. And yeah, issue one saw that like, Instantly, it's so popular. <coughs> um, but um, but yeah, man. I mean, I really, really, really couldn't recommend this book for to anybody else. And I'm really looking forward to also when the, when Marvel. Um, I think it's not next week. It's the week after when they release. Um, all the all new um, different Avengers. So um. The team is composed of Sam Wilson, Captain America, who is Captain America. Um, obviously, you guys know also, uh, as we know, before they did all of this, um, Sam Wilson was the Falcon and his team, you know, Captain America's teammate. So what's happened now is, um, in issue five of Sam Wilson, Captain America, written by Nick Spencer, uh, in issue five, they're introducing the Falcon. To work with Captain America, um, no one knows who he is or who, what his storyline or anything. But he, they will be introducing the Falcon. So I'm just thinking, who is he going to be working with? Steve Rogers or um, Sam Wilson? So it looks like we're going to find out. Um, also, on issue four of All New Avengers, we find out that we find out that um, the female Thor. Is starts the female four and um, Sam Wilson. They start getting it on. Lovers, they become lovers, superhero lovers and friends. So we'd like to see how that seeds in from seeing uh, all new different Avengers, which drops, I believe, not next week but the week after. So again, this whole new team is composed of um, Sam Wilson, Captain America. Um, Tony Stark, Thor, um, Nova, Ultimate Spider-Man, Miles Morales, 
Um, Camilla Khan. Miss Marvel. And Jane Wilson. Jane. And Jane, who plays the female four. So what I like about this team is... Sorry. How can I forget the vision? The vision as well. Um, how can I forget the vision? But yeah, it's going to be in a... a uh, an immense, it's a powerful team because you've got Thor and the Vision. Um, they're pretty powerful. That's like a that's like a, a tower buster team. Uh, you know, it's pretty pretty cool. But what I like about this team is they you know um, what like I said, Marvel started to do with all the, all with 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 their, with their all new number ones is you know the diversity, um, which is I'm I'm pretty happy to see because they were getting a lot of slack and a lot of a lot of people were hating not hate but people had rights to say and they were saying. You know, there was no diversity in Marvel. Um, you know, there was no people of color writing the comic books. There was no actually no color, you know, no characters that had color and that were, you know, being introduced into the Marvel that were actually in the Marvel comic books. So it's nice to see, like, obviously you've got a diverse and you've got a female four. You've got a black Captain America. Tony Stark is there. You've got a small kid. <laughs> you've got Nova, you know, which is a small kid. Um, and then you've got Miles Morales as the ultimate Spider-Man. You've got Camilla Khan. Who's you know a female um um who's an Asian Muslim, you know. So you've got diversity, race from all over the place. So I'm really happy that Marvel's like I said have introduced more diversity into the comic books. All the comic books that you read now from Marvel Comics, all the number ones, if you open them up, you'll see just black characters, people from like all over the world as well, which is pretty cool. Even the back characters, people in the background, you see, you 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 you'll see more color in the books, which is cool because, it, like I said, it creates more diversity. Um, and what that means is when now when we have like comic cons like San Diego or you know in New York or any comic cons and they have the panels, you're gonna see more people of color from from black, you know, from black, white, Chinese, and so forth, just getting more involved into basically the scene because they get to see themselves in there you know just like the new hulk is you know the new hulk is korean uh, captain america's black ultimate spider-man is black um uh, camilla khan miss marvel you know asian muslim um also you're gonna have a copy of issue one of red wolf who's i believe a native um native american um the uncanny inhumans so the uncanny um avengers is in a sense um, of composed of some X Men and Inhumans, which basically just states that people of different you know races or attributes, regardless of who you who what you are, you actually become and become one as a team. So um, that's what I loved about I like about uh, the Avengers. This Avengers this is actually why I'm going to get it as well because I've never really kept any of the Marvel Avengers books apart from the Illuminati and that kind of dropped off and that just before the incursion started to happen. So um again I'm really looking forward to it. Um just to let you guys know some of um the new number ones that are Marvel bringing out next week or some other cool ones. So um Aven- uh, Avengers vs Infinity, which is basically what if another what if book. Um Extraordinary X Men issue one and the vision comes out of his number one with the vision comes out um with his solo book. Um Next week also, uh, th- next week also we're gonna have the release of James Bond, um, issue one, believe written by Warren Ellis. Cannot remember what if it's Image Comics. Can't remember where it's actually who's actually the distributor, but that's out definitely next week. Um, also, guys, for you guys in the Galaxy fans, uh, November the twentieth, um, uh, Marvel Comics, Marvel will be releasing Guardians of the Galaxy, um, Cosmic mix volume one on cassette so if you guys have seen the movie you see that what um star lord plays in his walkman which is basically um the cassette that, he, that was given to his mum you know that his mum gave to him when before she passed away so that was awesome mix volume one um the awesome the cosmic mix the cosmic mix volume one is basically taken from the songs that are used in the guardians of the galaxy animated tv show or sorry the cartoon so that'll be coming out on cassette on November the 20th you can actually pre-order it now on amazon.com I'm actually going to get mine because it's saying shipping to the UK is only like what eight dollars so I'm going to grab two two cassettes that's, that's it that's yep 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 like I said guys it's not the CD it's the cassette so that's going to be more valuable than the CD the CD came out already 
I already have my Guardians of the Galaxy volume um one. I actually have two copies, and I'm really looking forward to getting the um the Cosmic Mix volume one when it drops. So I'm really looking forward to that. Add it to my Marvel. Um add it to my Marvel collection. Cannot wait. So yeah, guys, that's November the 20th. You can actually go on Amazon right now and pre um literally um pre-order it. But yep, guys, that's pretty much it for me. Um, hope everyone has a nice, blessed night. Keep it safe in Halloween and uh, just enjoy the rest of your life. Remember, whatever makes you happy in life, whatever, when you wake up in the morning, you get a nice, warm feeling in your heart, mind, in your mind, body, and soul. Express it, live life, take chances, and break the rules in whatever you do in life, guys. I don't mean literally start killing people and whatever, I'm just saying. Uh, the one rule that you cannot, the one rule is don't just, just don't disrespect anybody, you know, being racially, mentally, physically. But yeah, break the rules, guys. You know, break the rules. Rules are meant to be bent and broken mentally, physically, and spiritually. It's about restructuring, it's about restructuring the mundane structure breaking that apart and making a new structure for yourself so you can put things in perspective with that being said peace love and inner light we're all spiritual beings having a physical experience not physical beings having a spiritual experience with that being said express yourself on what you want and do you know what, what you want what you want in your being you know express that and again hit me up on the twitter at two british nerds of a z that's my instagram sorry two british nerds, two british nerds of a z Twitter at C A V A D J. Um, email me two British nerds at gmail.com. And pretty soon, guys, when I get the funds, I will literally be doing the video podcast so people can actually see me now instead of actually hearing me. And people be like, oh, yeah, cool, that's him. So probably that'll raise my elevation. Uh, people are like, yeah, 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 it's DJ Seven, man, what's going on? And um, yeah, so that being said, um, Enjoy your day, peace, love, and light. And um, hit me on that. I guess again, if you guys have any cool pictures from your Halloween, from New York Comic Con, from Comic Con, from anything, just uh, mention me, man. Show me it, man. You know, I love interacting with with everybody on there. So, peace, love, and light. And again, enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and night, morning, wherever you are. Bye, peace, enjoy. <laughs>